Hey everyone, welcome back. And in today's video, I am super excited to show you because we are gonna be making hair and fur right inside Unreal Engine. No other software is needed. It's a plugin for Unreal called Ornatrix. It's about 300 bucks, so it's not cheap. It's not free. However, it's pretty powerful. It's still pretty new, but I'm gonna show you how we can get in there, make some hair, groom it, and add it to our characters. It's simulated physics and everything. So let's get started. First things first. The software is called Ornatrix. The company that makes it has been making plugins and add-ons for Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, and so forth. It's been used in games, it's been used in cinema. These guys know what they're doing. It's pretty customizable, pretty powerful, and now it's available directly into Unreal. So it's still pretty early, still a little buggy, so bear with it. Um, they do have a demo on their website that you can download. It's pretty well full featured, except for you can't actually turn it into an Unreal uh, Groom. So I'll link down in the description the, the website for those guys and you can check it out. There you have a demo you can get. You can request a trial version. You can see some of the other examples and so forth of it. But I wanna show you here today some of the basic examples that I've done and how I've been using it just to kind of play around. I'm still new at this, still trying it out, but uh, the results are pretty cool no matter what. I went ahead and created a pretty simple sample project here, uh, just using some spheres and a couple other miscellaneous objects just so you can get an idea of what the grooms are capable of. Um, this was just a simple sphere. And this has a very simple groom to it, just basically some hairs, that I've adjusted the thickness and length of them. I think it's about 250,000 hairs or strands going on. Um, and let's check this out. This is what's super cool about uh, the plugin Ornatrix and how it works. You can go into the plugin section here called Ornatrix. And in here, this is where you'll add all the different layers that create up your groom. How you can uh, you know, groom it, you can modify the texture, the length, the width, all sorts of different things in there. So once you've done that, there's literally just one button, clicks it over and turns it into an Unreal Groom. And once it becomes an Unreal Groom, it's super cool because there's physics and simulation already into it. Check this out. This is real time, 250,000 strands of hair with gloss and sheen. It looks really nice. Uh, this here is their basic uh, material that they have for it. Pretty simple, but it kind of gets the idea across. Next up, we have another pretty simple groom. This one just has a frizz modifier applied to it along with some directional surface combs. So you can kind of see how the fur is just, or the hair is roughly going a few different directions. Same thing, added out full physics, ready to go and simulated. It's really cool. Next here, I went ahead and added a clump modifier to it. This would be great for working with furs or other types of matted hair materials that you might use. Same thing, ready to go, physics, everything. And you can create multiple layers of clumpiness and multiple layers of frizz and multiple layers of curls, all sorts of different things stacked on top of each other to create different effects in different areas. It's really cool. This here is another fun little example. It, this was a simple teddy bear mesh that I downloaded and applied a hair groom to it. And this one's kind of got a lot of mattiness looking to it, clumpiness. There's several stray hairs going off in different directions. I applied a different um, material to it for the actual groom itself. And you can see like it's pretty well done. Like you can get up behind it, the way the sun shines through it. It's pretty detailed. We can get fairly close and you can actually start to add more detail to, hair, to the hairs, how many polys it's got in it and so forth. Um, you can go through and adjust all those settings. Same thing, it's got physics ready to go. And of course, this is a much shorter hair, so you can see it's gonna react a little more proper. It's not gonna, it's gonna have a little bit of jiggle to it. All this stuff is adjustable and you can change it later on as you please, but it works really well straight out the box. And the last example I wanna show you here is this is a skeletal mesh of a wolf. This is actually a free download in the marketplace. And what you can do is, uh, this is gonna look a little sloppy because I basically use the furball mode. So I didn't go in and draw out the hairs. I didn't add the hairs exactly where I wanted them. Uh, the furball mode just basically adds hair everywhere on it. It's a giant furball. So this isn't gonna look super perfect, but it is gonna help you kind of see and represent what you can do with 
the Ornatrix Pro again. It's pretty cool. So here we have a pretty simple skeletal mesh. It's animated and so forth. You can see I've, I've done a cool little custom material on it. It's actually kind of this dark wolf. It has like a dark skin underneath it and so forth. But what we can do now is because I've added the fur, I've surface combed it a little bit, added different directions for it and so forth, I can now take the wolf and I already have it set up in a walk cycle. So we're gonna go ahead and simulate that real quick. And you can see here, not perfect, not perfect by any means. You get some weird kind of clumping in different spots. However, pretty cool. Uh, moves with the motion of the animal. The physics are still reacting and the fur is jiggling, it's moving. Let's actually switch this up real quick. We'll give it something a little more dramatic. And you can see a run cycle there. So real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how easy it is to add hair or fur to just about any object in your scene. So let's select our sphere here and I'm going to go switch over into the Ornatrix plugin and make sure our sphere or ball is selected. I am going to go ahead and click the plus signal here and you're not gonna see this window, but it gives you a couple different options for adding fur. So I'm just going to add a fur ball and you're gonna see here, pretty simple. Just kind of looks like a bunch of spikes coming out right now, but we're gonna fine tune it. We're gonna make it look more like some hair or some fur. So the way the system works is you use this left panel here to add layers and modifiers to change the look and feel of your hair. So what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna jump over into change width and I am going to change this to, let's say 0.2. I want kind of a thinner hair going on. I'm gonna add another layer here for length. And on the length, let's go ahead and set that to about 0.5. I want something a little bit shorter. And what's cool is you can add hair several different ways. You can do the fur ball effect, which basically just adds fur everywhere or hair. Um, you can also paint the hair on yourself using the brushes here. There's a create and a delete. There's a comb, there's a cut, a grab, grow, paint. There's a bunch of different tools there to modify and edit your groom as you go. Um, so let's switch back over to tools here and I'm gonna add another layer. Um, one of the fun layers to add is the clumping feature. That kind of gives you more of a fur look. So in the clump, uh, and before we add our clump, let's go back to our hair from guides. And so our hair from guides is our initial modifier, our initial layer here. And under the details panel, I'm gonna switch over here. You can see our root count is 10,000. So technically there should be around 10,000 hairs on this sphere, which it doesn't look like that much by any means. So let's go ahead and crank this up. Let's do, let's do 200,000. Depending on your system, it's definitely gonna take some resources. So I have a pretty decent system, so it's not too bad. 200,000 looks quite a bit better. So let's make sure our sphere is selected here. Let's come back over to our clump section. And under clumps, we're gonna add this add clump button. And in here, let's give it a clump count of, oh, let's say 1,000. And let's click on create. What that's gonna do is create some clumping here. So there is tons of options, tons of ways of how you can modify how the clumps come together and you can create layers of clumps, all sorts of stuff. I'm gonna keep it real simple for this demonstration here. So now that we have some clumping, I actually wanna add a little bit of, uh, let's say frizz. So what frizz is gonna do is frizz is going to give you some stray hairs. It's kind of frizzy. They're kind of going different directions. It's pretty cool. You can come over here to the details panel for that. You can modify the amount of frizz. Right now it's at 20. So we could take it down to maybe five or 10, just a little bit less frizz going on. You could add another layer for curls. I wanna have some curls in there. So same thing, add a layer for curls. Jump over here. You could start making things look curly. And yeah, let's do that just for fun here. One cool layer that you can add later on is the detail uh, layer. This will actually allow you to increase the quality and the detail of your strands. Not as uh, It'll increase the amount of polygons in each strand. Um, there's You can adjust the gravity. You can adjust um, all sorts of different stuff. There's tons of layers here. A lot of them I don't even know about yet, but just trying to show you some simple basics here of this. So literally that is pretty much about it. And at this rate, you could increase your hair count if you want. You can do all sorts of different things.
but I'm going to show you how easy this is to literally get it over into basically an Unreal Groom. There's one button right up here that says toggle between the native groom and an editable Ornatrix hair system. And what's really cool is once you take this and you convert it into an Unreal Groom, you can come right back to it and continue to edit it again. So let's click that button. This is going to take, it's actually going to come up and prompt you. Do you want to do this? You're going to press yes. And this time it's usually going to take a little bit of time to just calculate this and create the actual groom. This one's not a ton of hair, so it didn't take too long. Now we have an actual native groom inside of Unreal. And sure enough, move it around. It's got hair physics ready to go. You know, it is a full sphere all the way around full groom on all sides since we did the furball effect on it and it's literally that easy and it looks pretty good uh, maybe not for movies not for maybe high-end studios or something but for some really cool games and probably simple cinematics this would work really well and it's actually a ton of fun to kind of play with and mess around with and like i said literally with one click here i can switch back into the ornatrix plugin and now I can edit it again, add more hairs, more curl, change the effect, you know, all sorts of stuff. So that pretty much sums it up. I hope you guys liked the video. I'm not affiliated with these guys at all, but I'm going to leave the links down in the description. I spent my own hard earned cash just to buy it and try it out. But I am a firm believer of being able to do all the stuff that you can inside of Unreal, or at least as much as you can. Why have to go outside and export from other software and do this and do that when if you can do it all inside Unreal? it's just going to get more and more powerful. So make sure you guys hit the thumbs up, the like button, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm excited to check out more tools and stuff like this. So until next time, peace out.